All right, up next in our virtual football media day are the preseason favorites. The Kennesaw State Owls have to be joined by Coach Brian Bohannon, quarterback Tommy Bryant, and preseason defensive player of the year Bryson Armstrong. We'll go ahead and begin with, uh, with Coach Bohannon. Coach, welcome in uh, starting year six. Um, if you can open up just kind of the reaction to being the preseason favorite for the fourth straight year. I'll ask a follow-up, and then we'll start taking questions from our media uh, panel. Thanks, Mark, and I appreciate everybody joining us today on a good virtual uh, media day. This is the virtual world we're in now, so it's um, we've become a little better at navigating our way through it. But uh, just came out of a walkthrough with our guys this morning. It's just always it's always good to be out uh, practicing, doing some kind of football at this point in time. Obviously, we're in a unique situation uh, in the middle of, uh, you know, the pandemic that's been going on, and we're trying to navigate that. Um, I'll be honest with you, as far as our reaction to uh, preseason, uh, honestly, with our program right now, the expectation is to finish uh, at the end of the year at the top, and we don't really pay a whole lot of attention to the beginning, not to take away anything from any media or any voting, none of that at all, but in all honesty, the way our program's structured, it's – we want we we're we're more about the end game than we are the beginning. Um, you know we're appreciative, um, but I don't know that I've heard one kid say anything about it or one coach say anything about it. I think yeah, ultimately we want to finish in the right spot at the end to give ourselves an opportunity um, to play further in the playoffs and continue on to hopefully play in January at some point in time is the is the end goal for our program, uh, and that's been that way from day one. So that that really hasn't changed, but um, we're. We're just excited about hopefully the opportunity to play. I think that's the, you know, it's uh, that's that's kind of what's out there. That's kind of the elephant in the room, I guess, for everybody. But we're excited about the opportunity, and I think media day always kicks things off and kind of gets your your blood flowing a little bit that you know it's time for football, and that's always an exciting part of media day. All right, coach. Thanks. We're going to turn, uh, go ahead and let everyone start uh, entering the question queue to ask questions for you. And as we do that, coach, it's kind of Give us an update on what the team has been able to – or what you've been able to do with the team since, you know, the spring. I don't know how much spring football you got in. What were some things you are able to communicate with your squad during the spring and then leading up to recent, you know, individual workouts to now where you're able to come together more as a group? Yeah, so we, we were going into our ninth practice. Uh, I think it was March 13th would have been that practice day. and We're getting ready to practice on a Friday afternoon, and it got called off. Um, we had a team meeting, like practice got called off at 1.30. We had a team meeting at 2.30, and everybody's heading home at 3.30. I mean, it's the wildest thing ever. In a matter of a short period of time, we're getting everybody home, trying to explain um, kind of what all was going on and what the protocols were. Um, as a staff, we met on Monday, and really we spent all day trying to get ourselves virtually ready to go navigate because we didn't know how long this was going to go. And, uh, and we broke um, – on the 16th as a staff, and in all honesty, we didn't we didn't come back in the office. I think it was uh, it ended up being around June 15th or so. Uh, we weren't back in the office. So what we did in the interim, um, and I think a couple things got accomplished. Um, a lot of Zoom meetings, and, and and the Zoom meetings were some football, but I'll be honest with you, it was more welfare checks than it was anything. You got guys spread out everywhere, kind of seeing how they're doing what's going on with them. And it gave us a chance to really slow down a little bit. And I think our team probably came together and got to know each other better in some ways than we maybe would have prior to this um, because it, it was unique. We, we had meetings every week. Uh, there was unit meetings going on at the same time. Um, so I think one thing I, I feel like we got was some, some guys came together and got to know each other a little bit better during that time. And I, I tell you the other thing for all of us, and I think this would apply to probably everybody. I think in life you you take things for granted sometimes, and when you lose things that you love that you never thought you would have, you appreciate them a lot more. You know, the ability just to show up and have a meeting with a group of individuals is we, we it's hard to do right now. Uh, going out and practicing, it's it's hard to do right now. So these things and having a chance to play football and do the things that we love to do, which is interacting with kids and and communicating and doing those things, which is what I love about it. Um, you know, when, when you lose that, I think it makes you appreciate it more, and I think it makes you a little more hungry 
uh, for the opportunities you do have. So I think those are probably two things, you know, between the time um, we shut down and then, you know, we, we started getting kids back on campus July 1, um, and we started walkthroughs on the 24th. Um, but we've been virtually meeting, and we'll, we, we'll be virtually meeting, <clears throat> excuse me, for, uh, for the time being. I mean, I don't, th I don't see that changing at all. So um, we just got to learn to adapt. And with this, th this deal right now, you just take it day by day. And, and, and it's kind of cliche. You just try to win the day and move to the next one because um, th there's a lot going on, and, and, and you got to kind of navigate it and try to stay positive. We're taking questions for Kennesaw State head coach Brian Bohannon. Coach, uh, another question for me. More, what is, what is your preseason camp schedule look like? What are some of the COVID protocols uh, that will be in place? Kind of how is that kind of coming together? Well, I mean, I'm we've been working our way through that. And I think, you know, obviously meeting-wise, we can virtually meet. Um, even in our walkthroughs right now, obviously we're in mask and we're trying to make sure even – the process of that that we're social distancing um you know as we enter the field it's it's it, everything you do is different everything it's you know normally every everybody will come to the field they'll all be there together putting their cleats on we can't do that anymore everybody's got to bring their own water we have staging areas you know each kind of each position group kind of has a staging area that they set their stuff up and that's that's kind of where they go that's where they and you know we leave the field staggered we enter the field staggered um you know, we, we have more drills set up now than we probably ever have to eliminate anybody just standing around on the sideline. Um, you know, and so it, it, there's so many things. And I'll say this, our training staff's unbelievable. Um, and I know with every school on this call, for everybody, there has been so much time and effort and energy put into planning, scheduling, to keep our kids and our staff healthy and safe. And it's been a ton, and it, and I'll be honest, we it changes daily because we get new information, and we're navigating this as we go. Um, but it's very different. We we don't meet in person. Um, we are going to try to use our gymnasium at night, where we can social distance and mask, so that we can actually. One thing of the two things for camp for me are ball and team. I've always told our team that it's about ball and it's about team, and so, uh, to find a way to come together. Um, at some point, we can't really have meals together like we used to. Um, so we, we're going to use our gymnasium, hopefully, uh, where we can truly social distance and get some things accomplished and, and do some walkthroughs and stuff in the evening. But other than that, we'll be virtually meeting and trying to do everything on the best we can with the facilities we have, which nobody in America has the facilities to social distance meetings. It's impossible. Nobody has that. I mean, you know, you, you got to find a way to stagger your schedule. You just got to go virtual. We chose to go virtual um, just because the time of day to get all that done I, it would be a, would be a bigger headache than, than what it's worth. So we were trying to keep everybody safe and healthy and play the game we love. And that's a fine balance right now. And I think everybody in America knows it. Um, and that's our goal right now. All right, Coach, we have uh, several questions for you. We'll start with Brendan Boylan and then continue with Maria Martin. Go ahead, Brendan. Hey, Coach, uh, Bryce Armstrong wins Defensive Player of the Year in the conference for yet another year. Um, what makes him so special on the defensive side of the ball, and what do you expect from him from a leadership uh, standpoint this year? Well, I think what makes Bryson special is a lot of things. I think, you know, he has an innate ability to um, – some guys just have that natural ability to be around the ball and do things instinctively um, and be at the right place at the right time. Um, we'd like to say it's all coaching, but <laughs> we know he's got some God-given talents um, that, uh, that, that he's been unbelievable with in his career here. I wish we had him for more time. Um, it's hard to believe that this is his, this is his, fifth, uh, his fourth season, but fifth year being here. Um, but he's an unbelievable talent, unbelievable player. But I think what makes him even more special is he's humble. He's one of the hardest workers on our team. Um, he's a team guy. It's never about him. And all honesty, you wouldn't know he's even out there because he's not going to say too many words. Now, when he speaks, everybody's going to listen. Um, but he's so humble. He's such a hard worker. And I think that's what makes him really special. Kids respect him. Um, and I think from a leadership standpoint, that's really it. He's going to be a more lead-by-example guy than he is going to be necessarily a vocal guy. That's his personality. 
And I think people respect the way he goes about his business, how hard he practices, they see the production on the field. There's no better way to lead than that. So um, I don't expect anything but the best from Bryson uh, this year. Um, the way he goes about his business, I would expect that, and I think he would expect that. And uh, we're excited for him and for, for the defense and for his leadership for this fall. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Brennan. Uh, Maria Martin, please go ahead. Coach, whenever you have different opponents that are dropping off the schedule because of their schedule changes or they're not starting on time, what is your level of stress, I guess, whenever you see that happening? And do you have an update on what the Big South is doing for you guys right now? Well, um, I don't know if it's about scheduling, but the level of stress is at a different place right now. But find me somebody in our country right now that doesn't have a different level of stress. It's just a different time. I mean, it's, you know, and, and there's just so many things going on and, and you want to do what's right. And I think at the end of the day, that's the bottom line. We're trying to do what's right for everybody involved to keep everybody safe and healthy. And I think each team's got to do what they feel is best. I think uh, our commissioner, Commissioner Calander, the Big South have done an unbelievable job fighting to play football as long as we can do it in the right manner this year. And whatever that looks like, if it's plugging in another team or whatever it might be, I know that's been the, you know, the commissioner and the Big South stance is, is to fight to play if we can do it in the right manner and keep everybody as safe and healthy as possible. So, um, I mean, the stress is different. It's, you know, I'd like to sit here and tell you everything's great and, and we're just moving right along, but I'd be lying to you. I mean, we, we, gotta, we spend a lot of time just trying to make sure we walk in the building the right way. We spend a lot of time and effort and energy to make sure we go to practice in the right way. Things you would never think about. We're still here to think about it. I'm out, at pra I'm out at a walk through today, and I'm talking to our head trainer about, hey, when we go to break, this is how we need to do it. No, he actually – When we go to this, this is how we need to do it. And, and that's just different. It's, you got to do it, and it's part of it because, you know, we want to we keep our kids and staff safe. So it, it's, it's different. I'd say there is a different stress level to it. Um, I haven't consumed myself with the schedule right now. Um, we're always active in, in trying to find games if it works for us, and we take the information as it comes. And then obviously, you know, you, you talk about how you're stressed, the kids are concerned, but do you have any parents that have reached out to you that are kind of concerned about everything that's going on? Um, not really. We, um, you know, we've communicated with our, our upperclassmen and actually communicated with the parents of the freshmen hadn't been in our program um, and we did our very best to communicate everything we had in place as we got this thing started um, you know to keep everybody safe and healthy and at the same time we've uh, made it a very open line of communication if there's a question or concern about anything we have going on that we would be glad to communicate what we're doing um, so I, I don't know that we've had anything in particular we've tried to be up front and front end as much as that as we can um, but, uh, but nothing's really major has come up today. Now, it's today, and tomorrow's a new day. Um, so we'll, we'll navigate as we go. Coach, thanks. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. All right, next is uh, questions from Jacob Roth, followed by Michael Hubert. Hey, Coach, just a couple things uh, for you. First, how do you feel about the way uh, your guys came in fit? You know, you weren't able to get in all the spring practice you wanted. So how do you feel about the fitness levels of everybody? Um, I think we're in a better place now. I, I don't think we were, you know, when we got back, I think the thing about it is, is they're all, they're different places. You know, you got some that probably did more than others, you know, um, and so, um, but, but I think we're getting closer to, to a point where, where we might normally be. I don't know if we'll get quite to that, but, um, but we're working on it, getting there. But I think the mindset, having these walkthroughs and just ability to do a little bit right now, I think helps the mindset of our kids because that's the, really the first thing they've done, uh, you know, since the few days of spring we got in. So I think that's helped their mindset a little bit. Um, but, you know, until we get out there and fully get going, I don't know exactly, we'll know exactly where we are um, as far as the conditioning. But I do think we've made some progress. And getting everybody back, at least by the second week of July, helped us. Okay, and one more thing real quick. Um, this is more of a big picture question, but, you know, this is year six. To see already, you know, I know the voting doesn't mean a ton, but, you know, 
conference favorite again. You guys have making, you know, made the playoffs three years running. Like, what does it, what does it mean to you to build this program to, you know, be well respected in the FCS after just a few seasons since it started? Well, I think it's a tribute to our our kids and our staff and everybody buying into a common goal and vision and. I'm a firm believer that culture beats scheme every day. People like to talk about where you're a spread option, you're a four, two, five, or you're spread. What I, 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 we've really worked hard was our culture. And day one, it was about winning championships. It was about winning the Big South and winning the National Championship. That's day one. That's before we, I mean, ever played a game. That's what we talked about. That's what we envisioned. And I'll be honest with you, we want to be in that conversation when you talk about the elite programs of FCS football. We want to be in that conversation. We want to be talked about in that light. And, you know, we're going to continue to work for that and continue to work in that direction. Um, but I think it's just really about our kids and our program and how we've uh, gone about our business. And it's really more, I think, the inside piece of the culture uh, with a great staff that does an unbelievable job. we got great kids that believe in one another and believe in their staff. And that's, that's how we're built, you know. And um, I, a lot of people talk about we, all, we run this or we do that. But um, – I firmly believe that's what's given us a chance to really, really be successful, and hopefully we can continue on that path and and, and get in that conversation at the end of the year. Thank you, Coach. Hey, Coach. I wanted to ask you about two players. Uh, one that's uh, – was one of your former players. He's on UNA's roster now, running back Jackson Carson. I just wanted to see what you remember really stood out about him when you recruited him out of high school. And the other player is uh, linebacker Chance Bates. I mean – we talked about Bryson earlier. What are your expectations for uh, Chance on the defense this year? Well, I think Chance is at a point right now. I mean, he's a starter, and we need him to not only be a leader, but we need to be for him to be as productive as we believe he can be. And I believe he can be a really productive player. Uh, you know, he's been in the program. Uh, he's played football. He's gotten the speed of the game, knows what's going on. He's unbelievably talented. Um, great kid, great worker. Um, again, he's not a real vocal guy, but – He's got to learn to lead by example. And then when he has that opportunity to speak, I think uh, our kids will respect him and, and be able to follow him as well. But I, I, he needs to have a breakout year, a really good year for us, uh, Chance does. Uh, Jackson was in, with us for a little bit. Really good kid, really good feet. Um, you know, a great kid. Love being around him. Fun to coach. Um, you know, I guess that's really kind of it. Appreciate it, Coach. Hey, Coach, Craig Haley from Staff Perform. How are you? Good, Craig. How are you? Real well, thank you. Given what can happen, in, you know, with COVID, if you're looking at Major League Baseball and specifically the Marlins, could a football season that's played every other week where you can deal with COVID concerns, could that actually be feasible? Um, I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I think part of it is COVID is here, and it's like it's not going anywhere for a while. And I think what we got to find a way to do is is um, take all the precautions from um, you know the state and local and everybody here and say, all right, this is the best course of action. And whether that's playing every week or every other week, I'll be honest with you, I think some of it's going to happen naturally, Craig. I think just the way things are going to unfold, some of that may happen naturally. Um, but the thing about it is, is you don't know what week that is. You know, all right, well, you know. We got guys down. Was it the week you're playing or the week you're off? I mean, it's hard to plan how all that stuff would unfold in the course of the season. Um, so I don't know if I have a real good answer for you, to be honest with you, or one be better than the other. Um, you know, I think we're looking forward to trying to get some semblance of a season together, whatever we can do to have a chance to go play and understand that, hey, it may get interrupted somewhere. I mean, that's, that's the reality of it. I think we'll deal with it day by day like we're trying to do everything else right now. Thank you, Coach. Best of luck. Thank you, Craig. Thanks, Craig. Next is from John from Marietta, and then we'll uh, have Reggie Walker. Go ahead, John. Morning, Coach. Morning, John. Uh, most of uh, everybody has already asked some of the questions I wanted to ask, so we'll do this. Uh, I know that uh, uh, we've had some uh, talks about uh, potential opening opponents and things like that. We've got uh, four holes on the schedule. I know that the Big South is going to uh, meet about scheduling this week, but have we got any updates on uh, potential opponents to fill the spot against uh, Point or Alabama State? No, not right now. 
Uh, we don't have any updates on, on, on any of that at this point in time. Um, I think everything's still kind of out there um, to see what, what may come available. And, and, and there's a good chance there's going to be some, I won't call them holes, but there may be weeks we, we don't play um, just based on, um, you know, having an opponent available for that opportunity. So uh, no updates right now. Coach, how you doing? Good to see you again. I know first time we met, we were sitting at a table next to each other at this event last year, getting ready to eat. So it's, it's quite different, obviously. <laughs> yeah, to say the least. Uh, real quick for you, and just trying to look at this kind of bigger picture. Um, obviously, as COVID happens, uh, there's a ch chance for cases on teams, players uh, maybe having to sit out. How much have you thought about the, the way to use uh, the new red shirt rule and allowing some younger guys to play some games and not losing that year. How much does that kind of help in this type of process? Well, this is, I'll tell you this, Rick, this is what I told our staff and our, and I, you know, I really said it to our kids yet, but I, cause I don't really need to right now, but I told our staff, I said, you know, you guys on defense better learn how to coach every position. You guys on offense better learn how to coach every position because you don't know when something's going to happen. And I may not be able to coach for two weeks. Somebody on defense might not be able to coach for two weeks. And in the same breath, you better get every kid out there ready to play. Whether they're a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, a senior, you better get every one of them ready to play. Because you don't know what's going to happen and when. And, and, and so we got to go coach them all. Uh, we, we normally do. But I think normally for, for most of the freshmen, we're not as worried about, you know, their progression. But we're going to go – we always coach them all. But we're probably going to be a little more deliberate about that just because of the circumstances we're in. Um, as far as the red shirt rule goes, I'll be honest, we haven't thought anything about it right now. Uh, I think right now we're trying to get everybody ready to play. And we, we'll have to do what we have to do, you know, in the moment based on the circumstances. And, and make decisions as we go. I, I think the whole thing with all this, and I think y'all all know this, there's no, there's, there's no playbook for this. There's no, hey, this is what you do when this happens. There, there's none of that. And so I don't mean to sound like I'm taking it lightly by saying day by day, because I'll be honest with you tomorrow, I may get some different information that takes us down a little bit of a different path. And then the day after that, we get more information, and we're going down another path. It is just a different deal, and 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 and, and it, it, day by day, and and we talk about it, we communicate, and you know what? We go out and we do what we got to do, and then we'll we'll navigate it as we go. And it's again, I'm not being, it's just real, man. It's I got I I ain't got all the answers for this sucker. I can tell you right now, I ain't nowhere close. I'm just trying to trying to navigate today and see if we can get through today with <laughs> without any without anything happening, and then we'll go to tomorrow. You know, and it's – I think that's just where we are. And I think everybody's that way. Um, and, you know, I, you know, with our kids, I, hey, I told them the other day, I said, listen, guys, we're getting ready to play. Don't worry about nothing else. Just get ready to play. The precautions and everything we've talked about, hey, they're there. We, I told them all that. I said, it's going to be up to you guys how far we go with this. And, and, and you can only bubble so much. You know what I mean? What you do in your free time is what you do in your free time. And, and I think that's going to have an impact. But – um, I told our guys, I said, listen, we're getting ready to play. I don't know what the schedule's going to look like. I don't know when our first game's going to be. But right now, today, let's go get ready to play. And that's all we can focus on and, and try to navigate that and deal with that. And we'll deal with it tomorrow, tomorrow, and go from there. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks, Reggie. Thanks, Coach. Coach, we're going to let uh, your two student athletes uh, have some time now. Uh, welcome in quarterback Tommy Bryant, linebacker and preseason defensive player of the year, Bryson Armstrong. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Tommy, I'll start with you. Uh, we do have some questions in the queue for, for, uh, for you guys, but uh, just a few things first. Tommy um, kind of took over the starting quarterback duties last season. Um, how would you assess kind of taking over that role? I know you kind of banged up in the playoffs, but uh, running the offense in, in the comfort level as the season wore on and now going into camp. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, but um... – Honestly, you know, going into uh, going into the season, uh, I was prepared as if I was going to be the starting quarterback. Uh, 
in, 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 in the next game. And, you know, I've seen it so many times with previous quarterbacks here, you know, Trey White going down and Chandler stepping up and then Chandler going down and Daniel Davis stepping up. So it was nothing new that uh, that I, I, I wasn't – I wasn't ready for. So I felt like I, I was comfortable in just about every game I played. You mentioned Chandler Burks now on the coaching staff. What have you been able to learn from him now as a coach compared to when you were a teammate uh, earlier on? It's pretty much the same uh, when when he was here because I looked at him as a coach on the field. Uh, he, he taught me so much while he was here. And now I guess it's a little bit more intense and a little bit more – uh, upbeat about things uh, from him. Great. Uh, let's bring in Bryson. Bryson, first off, congratulations again on being the preseason defensive player of the year. Um, just kind of your reaction to that. Uh, I know it's kind of old hat now, but uh, and does this increase your expectations for yourself? Uh, thank you very much. And uh, really the only thing I have to say is just how thankful I am to um, have the Lord and Savior that I have and uh, the teammates and coaches that I have. Um, I wish everyone that played football had the opportunity to be able to play with uh, on the same field as the guys, you know, I've gotten to now and, and in the past. So um, I want to thank those guys that I play with now, those guys that I played with in the past and um, the coaching staff, obviously. Um, you guys know Coach Bo, how great of a coach he is. Um, it's even different when, um, you know, you're playing for him and um, all the defense coordinators I've had in the past. Um, it really, like Coach Bo said, uh, he kind of was, kind of was kidding. Um, you know, it's all because of them. It really is. Um, I obviously would not be the player, half the player I am, um, without those guys. So thank you, guys. All right, we're going to take questions now for both Bryson and Tommy. Please enter your name in our group or our Zoom group chat, and we'll take your uh, question as they come in. Uh, first, though, is uh, Craig Haley from uh, Stats. Go ahead, Craig. Thank you, Mark. Hey, Bryson, how are you? Yeah, how are you? Real well, thank you. Can can you talk about the the emotions of having this happen before your senior season? Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of it's kind of a shock, um, kind of not not just to me, but to everyone um, in the in the world. Really, uh, we're all kind of going through the same thing right now. But um, you know, it's, it's of course it's got to be um, my senior year. It happens, but um, I think we'll get through it. And um, you know everything will be okay, and we'll have a we'll have a season this year, hopefully, and um, finish strong. What what did you learn from some of the seniors along the way? You know, as you you know played such have played such a big role, but just looking to senior leadership. Um, yeah, I'm I'm so fortunate to be able to play with the guys I played with in the past. Um, you know, a lot of I learned a lot of things I learned came from those guys, and I'm hoping to be um, the same kind of role model that um, they were for me that I can be for the young guys. So, um, you know, coming in senior year is kind of a different expectation, and um, I'm just hoping to to lead the best I can. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. Next is Brendan Boylan. Go ahead, Brendan. Hey, Bryson. Brendan Boylan here. Uh, you're going into your fifth year being at Kennesaw State. Uh, you've been here through the process of the program starting a little bit and getting into this powerhouse of a team. Uh, what has that experience meant to you and how much has Coach Bo uh, affected you on and off the field? Yeah, I, I just had a, the best time uh, these past, the past years playing here at Kennesaw. Um, I've learned so much from these coaches, uh, but going out on the field every, every day, and then get up, being able to work with them is is another story. Um, and like you mentioned, being a powerhouse, um, just being able to build this kind of from the ground up is is such an incredible experience. Uh, I'll probably look back at this, you know, 30 years from from now, and um, and j just be able to say that I was a part of that is, is incredible. And uh, we're really only going up from here, so. All right, next question is from uh, Michael Haybear. Go ahead, Michael. Hey, Bryson. Uh, um, I asked Coach about this. I just wanted to get your thoughts on, um, you know, a player that's a similar position to you, Chance Bates. I mean, 
played with him for a little bit now. I mean, what are, what are your kind of thoughts of uh, working with him? And what are your expectations for him as a part of the defense this year with you? Yeah, he's a, he's an incredible player. I remember when, when uh, we were recruiting him and Coach Newberry was telling me, all, he was so excited about this guy. He was like telling me how he, he should be playing the FBS level, how, how big he is, how strong he is. And he really is a big, strong, physical linebacker. Um, you know, he fits that Mike that Mike Backer role pretty pretty well. Um, he's a good leader, uh, communicates well on the field, and I expect nothing but, um, you know, the best for him. Uh, he's, he's had a great two years, and um, he's only getting better. Appreciate it. All right, uh, we're going back to Craig Haley. He's got a question for Tommy Bryant. Go ahead, Craig. Hey, Tommy, how are you? I'm doing great about yourself. Uh, real well, thank you. We, we always hear, you know, we all think about how a team that doesn't normally face a, an option offense, we could use like a, a Weber State as an example, just how they're, you know, there's not enough preparation time from week to week when you're not used to seeing your offense. You're actually part of that offense that gives other teams fits. Can, can you talk about what you see in defenses when they're not used to playing an option? Um, honestly, my, my eyes get big, you know, when, when we, we got a team that, uh, that hasn't, that, well, that doesn't have enough time to, you know, prepare for what we do. And we do so many things on offense. It's, it's hard to prepare just even if you have the whole summer, you know, um, but, you know, Gardner Webb was a great team and, you know, they handled us pretty good, but, you know, I, I think, you know, what we bring to the table is just so different. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. Uh, next is Reggie Walker. Go ahead, Reggie. Uh, question for uh, both Tommy and Bryson. Um, uh, start with Bryson first. Um, when, Coach already talked about how you're you're kind of a lead by example guy. I remember talking to you last year, and you're not a guy that says much. Uh, with that being said, how has your leadership kind of style maybe shifted a little bit? because you guys are spending so much time on Zoom. And then to Tommy, similar question, uh, with so much time on, you know, trying to work with these younger guys via Zoom and things like that, how much do you talk to them about your own situation and staying ready and how much that's important for them as well? Bryson? Yeah, I just uh, – I try to, to uh, build a relationship with uh, the young guys on the team and uh, to make sure they know – what's going on. I know, I remember when I got here in freshman year, I was that typical big guy freshman that uh, kind of didn't know what to do. So just kind of calming him down and knowing that, you know, I'm, I'm here for him. I, I like to um, think that everyone on the team knows that, you know, I'd do anything for him. And, you know, if they ever need anything, um, just call me. And just to know that I'm someone to talk to and uh, build a relationship with them. Uh, for me, um, you know, the footwork here, the footwork here and the mechanics are just totally different from, you know, what we're accustomed to when we come from high school. Uh, so, you know, when you get here, you know, you're just trying to stay above water uh, as, a, as a freshman, especially as a quarterback. Uh, and the way we practice is just so up-tempo and, and upbeat that, you know, you kind of just, you know, like I said, trying to stay above water. So I just let them know. You know, just stay calm and, and, and take your time and just see everything for what it is. And, uh, you know, I let them know that I've been in there and every quarterback that's come through has been in those shoes. So I let them know that they're not alone and they do have somebody they can come to. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Reggie. Well, we're not having any more. We don't see any more questions coming in. Um, so we will let you all go. We appreciate you joining us this morning uh, to talk about the 2020 season. We wish you all the best of luck and best of health. And we hope to see you during the season. Again, thanks for uh, joining us. Thanks, Mark. Thank I appreciate everybody coming today. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We are a few minutes ahead of schedule. Um, our next team is North Alabama at 12.15 uh, Eastern time. So please stand by and we'll begin uh, momentarily. Thank you.